Welcome to Podcast in Progress. I'm your host, Charlie Deist, here to save you time, money, and precious effort getting your voice to stand out from all the noise. Okay, welcome back to another episode of the podcast that, as of right now, actually doesn't have a name. Ali, uh, what do you think? The podcast without a name, could that be a good name for a podcast? Kind of fun. You know, everyone's going to start talking about it because they want to know what the name is. Yeah, right. And if if we can get up to 10,000 listeners for a podcast without a name, then just imagine what we could do with a podcast with a name. But, you know, I was thinking about this line. I think it was in the book, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. Uh, Start with the end in mind. And I think that that's a good place for us to start when we're thinking about how to use templates and efficient workflows to streamline a production process. And that word process implies that things are processing one to the next. Uh, I also think about this line from James Clear, who wrote that book, Atomic Habits, where he says that usually when we think we lack motivation, what we actually lack is clarity. So if you're struggling out there to get your podcast off the ground, It might not be that you lack motivation. You might just not be clear on what you have to do next. And so this is where the idea of kind of templatizing your workflow and and creating something where you always know exactly what you are supposed to do next. Um, So Ali, you produce Mind, Body, Health, and Politics, which is a great show hosted by Dr. Richard Miller. Uh, When you first came into that, did you have any idea what Notion was or any of these no-code tools? I didn't at all. I never used Notion before. Um, and so I made the account when I got the job. All right. We're going to look underneath the hood. And I feel like looking at someone's Notion dashboard is almost like looking in their medicine cabinet or it's an intimate thing. But I've asked you if you're willing to share with us the mind, body, health and politics dashboard. Uh, would you be willing to, to take us under the hood? Yeah, let's dive right in. All right. So Notion for the uninitiated is a all-in-one workspace, and it's part of this sort of Web 3.0 revolution where you can create your own software, basically, using these no-code tools. And what I've found it to be most useful for is organizing a content calendar around my podcasting work. So I had this kind of master calendar, and I said, Allie, this is what I work with. Um, How can we make this better? And what did you come up with? So the first thing um, I wanted to do was separate everything out by progress so that we could see exactly where guests were. And it wasn't just a calendar that you're looking at and you don't know who's scheduled, who's recorded already, things like that. And so that was the first view that I made. It's just a really easy kind of flow chart that you can go through who's agreed to interview, um, scheduled, post-production, and then completed. And this is one view of the database. We're slicing it up in in board view. People might be familiar with the Kanban methodology. And this is just that. It's the procession from one stage until it gets into that completed column when you know you can kind of rest easy. Well, and this, by doing it this way, you're not having to search your emails. That was something that I found I was doing was I was looking up a name to see when did I email them last? Where are we in this conversation? Having it in this board view, I don't have to do that anymore because it's all right here. So what are our other views? We've got the progress and what else? Uh, We've got our broadcast calendar. And this one is um, obviously when each episode will air. This is a beautiful view right here. It's so clean. Everything is neatly stacked on top of each other. And that just means that we have guests booked out uh, as far as the eye can see. If you go to May... We're booked out through, looks like, wow, how far out are we booked? All of Almost all of June. Which is great. Saturday is the first day of Q2. It feels good that we have that kind of locked into place. On the screen of the cards, there's a date which is listed here, which is not the date that the uh, show is scheduled to air. That, I assume, corresponds to the interview date property. Yes. Yeah, I have both in the card, the air date and interview date. But if you're looking at that broadcast calendar, I have it set so you can show when they interview. And so I know how much time and turnaround time in between when they interview and when I want their show to air. Um, And so then when you start playing around with order, um, if you want to move a show up or if you need to move one back, 
you can see how much time you're giving yourself to publish and edit and get that that episode aired. Excellent. So let's just check out that interview calendar as well. Yeah, so here we can see that the the dates are primarily kind of clustered around Wednesday. That's the the time slot that we default to because it wor is what works best for the host. And uh, so we, we have a system in place. So we're talking big picture about the calendar of guests, but each show also has its own progression and organization within it. And that's where we're going to turn now, which is the discussion of the order of operations and how you keep track of your to-dos for a given show. So before we get into that, I just want to talk about uh, sort of the notion of efficiency, which is a much maligned word. I think unfairly, you know, economists love to talk about efficiency. And Ali, when you asked me what are the values of this team, the first thing that I said was uh, efficiency. You know, I don't particularly uh, like to to work at my computer all day. I'd rather be outside, you know, swimming and and listening to the birds sing. So efficiency for me doesn't mean robotic mechanization to be assimilated into the Borg. It means getting your work done so that you can go and play outside. And related to that is this concept of the Pareto principle, sometimes referred to as the 80-20 rule or the power law. But basically it says that you're going to get 80% of the results from 20% of the effort. So how does this apply to templates? Well, you can go on YouTube and find all these fancy productivity channels that give you, you know, supposedly the best template, the the second brain, your your the template to end them all. But in the end, if you create a simple system that is built kind of from the ground up, that's probably going to get you a lot farther than what some uh, genius has devised that works very well for their brain, but might not actually work for yours. So I encourage people when they're coming up with their own templates to, to play around with Notion and try it out for yourself. Don't just take from someone else. But we are going to be looking at one possible way that you can organize a template. What's the system that you've devised for keeping track of your daily to-dos? Yeah, I just keep it really simple in a to-do list. And so I found if I was doing the same task over and over again, I wrote it down. And that's kind of how I created my to-do template. So I've got all of my tasks. I have them sorted by priority. And so you can mark high priority, low, medium. Um, I've got things I want to do, things I want to do tomorrow. Um, and then I've got a guest list. And it pulls from that broadcast calendar we were just looking at. And so I can see on my own personal to-do list where I'm at with each guest as well. And so I can drag and drop things over. Um, and so it's a really satisfying way to stay organized. And so at the end of my day, I take my doing, I look at my high and I pull into what I want to do tomorrow. And then from that list is what I pull into what I will be doing and working on. And are these linked in, in any way to that master database? Like are the cards for each of these guests uh, connected through a, a relational field or? Yes. So um, all of our cards, you can relate. And so I've got a property right here that's our master guest list that I link to. And so if I clicked on that, it would open up our card that we were just looking at where you can see their status, the air date, interview date, um, and that pulls from the master guest list. I was going to say, let's let's try to redesign the mind, body, health and politics dashboard, but that goes against my principles. And so I'm not going to do that instead. I'm just going to show you inside my medicine cabinet, which is the recently created dashboard for this podcast. So here we are on the dashboard for the Virgilius whole website. And within that, I've got a separate project for a podcast, Podcast Magicians. That was a tentative name. I'm not at all wedded to it. Any first thoughts on the Podcast Magicians? I don't love it. All right. It doesn't pass the gong test then. It's out. So here I've got my calendar where they flow from the idea phase through to being scheduled. This is the show that we're working on right now about templatizing your workflow. Uh, we just published this episode uh, with David Springer about embracing the power of AI for podcasting. Check that out if you haven't already. And then this one, uh, I come in here, I'll make this big and you see a couple things. First of all, I've got a show outline here and this is where I put in all my notes for the show. So here we are, we're talking about the need for templates and the order of operations. How do you track a show through to completion? And in your case, you just use those check boxes. 
which is a perfectly good way to go about it. In my case, I'm taking advantage of a new feature in Notion, these template buttons, where you can create a button that programs a certain order of operations automatically. And so in this case, I've instructed that when I press this button, I'm going to add a new page to my master tasks list for all of the uh, to-dos that I have under Virgilius. And it's going to create a task with an unchecked status, meaning it hasn't been done yet. It's assigned to me and it's going to create, uh, create it on the show calendar uh, for this linking it to this page, templatizing your workflow. So I'm creating the set of tasks associated with this particular show, uh, and it's automatically creating the, the answer to the question of which show, the show calendar relation. So I'm going to go ahead and let this work its magic. It creates the five tasks that I've laid out as being basically the essentials from prepping the show notes and then editing in Descript, sending for transcription. Another feature here, I've got the button for creating a transcript. I've got a button for creating show notes. There's this sort of tightrope walk between structure and flexibility. So if you think that you can just design your template at the outset and that it's never going to change, you know, good luck. But if you start with something modest and then adjust it to accommodate the circumstances that come up, you're going to be a lot better off. You could devise a system with all kinds of other buttons. And then you have to remember to press the button there. And it just, it can easily get out of control. And we don't want to get seduced by these features. They're powerful and we should use them. But if we find that we're just using them for the sake of using them, then we're really being used by the tools. And this applies to AI more broadly where, oh, now there's a new tool for writing show notes and descriptions and hashtags for every social media network under the sun. Now am I going to go and sign up for TikTok just so that I can take advantage of that new feature? No, I'm going to stick with what I know and I'm going to design the simplest possible system first, getting 80% of the results from 20% of the input. Again, with email templates, I just want to touch on that briefly because it's something that I've used to great effect where there are a handful of emails that I probably send. It's like 80% of the emails have 20% of the, the same basic backbone. When I'm emailing guests, it's always pretty much the same basic text. And so you can create what's called a canned response. Uh, can you show what that looks like in your Gmail? In Google, if you're not familiar, in settings, you can go in and turn on templates. And so it's part of this little uh, more options menu um, and templates show up. And so if you type any kind of email, you can save it as a template and then you don't have to retype it. You just click on it. And so one of ours is our invite for guests. And so I like to go through all my templates and highlight in red what has to change because you don't want to start emailing Susan with a hi, Anthony email. Um, or hi, first and, name or something like that. Exactly. And so I like to have in red what needs to change so that um, I have to physically change its color to know that I changed that name because that's the quickest way to look unprofessional is start calling people by the wrong name and emails and, you know. So here's our template that pulled. And so it's our letter. And you can see it's got some length to it. And so imagine having to copy and paste or type that every single time. That's a waste of your time. There's other things you can be doing. Templates. Boom. We've what, got... What's funny, I've started to notice that text messages coming from spammers who maybe at one point you signed up for their email list and they, they go to great lengths to make it seem organic and like they're just texting you one on one doing things like including little typos even uh, or or referencing the fact that, you know, it's a real human being. And it's like, it's, it's clearly not. And mm. I think in this case, you know, it's, it's a time saver. And I, I don't think that it's doing anything dishonest to be uh, using a template like this. But um, that's another thing to be mindful of is just, uh, you know, adding a personal touch. You can use the template, but then customizing it a little bit so that it does have a, a human element to it. Right. And I would say, especially with emails, because personally, when I see those text messages that very clearly they're trying to make it sound like a person's talking to me individually, but they're not, there's a disconnect there that I'm immediately like, this is spam. So there's a line that needs to be drawn there. And it, you still want to be professional. You still want to be consistent with your voice and your tone and how you're interacting with people. And that's where templates kind of come in. But then, like you said, 
make sure you are, we have a point here that says your work on, um, and that you can change it to what is their work to show that, hey, I actually read your article and that's why I'm talking to you. Um, and so you can reference the article, reference their work. Uh, if there's a book they have, I like to say, like, this book caught our host's attention so that they know that, like, this isn't just I sent 19 of these in one day. I did have to change some of it. Mm-hmm. But don't bend over backwards to try to make it sound like you're a best friend because you still want to have that kind of professional voice element. Right. So now let's let's turn to the topic of show notes. Last episode, I worked with David through the six AI tools that are changing the game. And I was fairly impressed by one of these tools called CapShow. A CapShow is an AI-assisted show notes and social media assets generator. They charge about $8 for the starter package per episode. And then I think 15 if you want a whole bunch of other platforms like your TikToks and your LinkedIn, where the output is all customized to the best practices for that platform. You can do something similar and cobble together your own version of this using prompts that are built into Notion. So for example, if I have a summary of a show or maybe even just my outline for that show, I can tell Notion, hey, based on this page, give me a 200 word YouTube description. And because it's based on one of these chat GPT type of engines, they're all pretty much based on the same thing. It'll give me a similar result. Maybe CapShow figured out exactly what prompts to use. To, but in general, I think that the, the chat GPTs of the world are going to be uh, about as good as what you get with CapShow if you want to put in the extra time of submitting these things as individual inquiries yourself. Where CapShow is supposed to save time is you just upload your audio file, or in some cases, you might even just link an RSS feed, and it's going to give you automatically these assets uh, for that show which you can just copy and paste. And I think in their 2.0 version, you're even able to pick which one you want. So Ali, I think we did a test where you did your own version of the show notes and then ran the, that same episode through CapShow just so we could compare, you know, who did better. We can call it Ali versus AI. We're just taking out two L's in the middle. So what were the results of that test? What did you find? I haven't seen these results yet and I'm excited to see what we got from the AI versus what we got from your own, your own mind. Yeah. Well, first we have several comparisons here because you did show notes and headers for this episode that I did not know you did. And so I did them without looking at yours. And so we kind of human versus human and we came up with very similar show notes. Our bullets are almost identical, which makes sense. So then compared to cap show, Here's the bullets that I came up with. I like the show notes to read that someone can kind of look at this and see the conversation trail rather than the top three things or the top four things that you're going to get out of the episode. And so CapShow focused more on here are the three things you get out of the episode. And so they're similar. I think the biggest thing with the CapShow AI was it overgeneralized. Is there anything that you can salvage from this, from these first two paragraphs, or do you feel like you're better off just kind of starting from scratch? I think the first paragraph you could salvage is just kind of a summation of his bio. That's easy, done. And really, the like the three things, it missed the mark, but it wasn't so far off. And so if you were familiar with the episode, you could take that as a jumping point, but you would have to be familiar with the material to then expand it into something that better conveys the message of the episode. And so I think that's something with AI is that it's um, its default is to simplify and to pull out like the simplest message. And so to use that, you would have to be very familiar with the material. I read through, I listened to the interview, I read through the transcript because I already made the show notes myself. And so then in reading this, I'm like, oh, I can use bits and pieces of this But again, that's only because I'm familiar with the material and I know the message that I want to convey with the episode. The AI cap shows version could be a tool. You're still going to have to put some manpower into editing and pulling out some meaning because this is a rough draft. Good to know. And uh, in the final minutes here, I want to tease something that I am not quite ready to share yet today, but my kind of homegrown version of CapShow. I'm going to play around with different prompts 
to see whether we can use Notion's built-in AI tools and some of the custom prompt blocks uh, to, to create a workflow where you can get that first draft. Of course, you'll still have to check it and edit it and make sure that it aligns with what you're reading in the transcript. But uh, what I'm hearing is that there's no silver bullet quite yet on this part. And uh, templates and AI can only get you so far. At the end of the day, you still need to figure out where is that 80-20 rule of where can I apply kind of a light touch in order to get the most results, 80% from the 20%. So any closing thoughts before we end here uh, about templates or the meaning of life, podcasts? Like you said, I think you need to find out what works for you, but it's not going to AI templates are not going to do your work for you they're going to make it easier. Um, Something that I have been using AI for in show notes, and that's maybe something that we can expand on later, but kind of you said like a teaser, is once you've made the bullet headers, highlight those and you can make then long form content from that. um, And that is usually pretty good. And so if you 100% human power, make your bullet points, um, make your, you know, section summaries, your headers, and then highlight those and then plug that into an AI and a prompt of either summarize, I've done show teasers, make it long form, make it right, like longer. That is usually pretty good because the base foundation is human powered and human edited. And so I think that's a really fun way to start using AI and make your job a little bit easier is like, hey, I have these bullet points, but I don't know how to make this a show intro or a newsletter teaser. Right, right. And so you give it a prompt like what, write uh, an opening teaser based on these bullet points or what's the exact prompt that you've used? Yeah, I have used uh, write an episode teaser based on these show notes and then copy and paste the bullet points uh, or have them highlighted in Notion. I've also done write a newsletter intro, um, an email newsletter intro and have it kind of more email formatted with those bullet points. I like a combination with chat gtp you can how it builds on it and so i'll say write a summary and then i'll have it okay turn this into an episode teaser Uh, and then i'll usually combine the two because that's the voice that i want is a little bit summary but also a little bit teaser right Um, and so that's what i've been more consistently doing is combining a summary and a teaser to get the tone and the voice that i want okay good to know So for now, it's still one all-in-one workspace to rule them all and in the darkness bind them or something like that. Uh, Have you had any other thoughts on what we could name this whole podcast uh, from from based on this conversation? Um, I was thinking, what about podcast pending? Because we're Hmm. like, we're working on building a podcast and what we're talking about is building a podcast. So you're working on it. It's a little alliteration. I don't know. I like that. That definitely goes on the short list. And so far, it passes the gong test. We need to get everyone drumming enthusiastically in favor, and it, it gets my vote. So we'll take that to the rest of the team. And for now, that is all for us here at Virgilius, your go to source for professional, polished pros out of podcast material. Whether you want your book to come into the world, but are too lazy to sit down and write it. Uh, or you want to start a podcast and get the most out of that material, make sure you reach out to us and see if we've got a solution that fits your needs. So thank you again, Ali, and I'll see you in Slack. You can say goodbye. (laughs) (laughs) I thought we were just done. Nope. (laughs) Thanks for having me. Oh, it's always fun talking about this and talking about how we can work better. Perfect.